Greg and I are up for a sunrise. We're gonna try to shoot this, I don't know what it is, a monastery that has pretty epic backdrop. And um, it's cold, it's early, we're ready to shoot. Good news and bad news this morning. The good news is we can see Kazbegi, which is the big peak here, and it looks unreal. And there's some pre-glow on it. Yeah, it looks unreal. Woo. The bad news is we're 30 minutes until sunrise, and we thought we could drive up this road. We can't. Google says it's a 45 minute walk from here, straight up this mountain. So we're gonna book it. We're gonna try to make it for sunrise, but it isn't looking good. I mean, it's looking good, it's just not looking good for photo making. Two days, two strikeouts, <laughs> because you can't see it now because we're kind of in these trees, but the path we thought went straight up is really steep and basically unmanageable. So we're on the road and still have two kilometers to go, but the light, and again, you can't see it, is just exploding, like just exploding. Purples, pinks, blues, Helping glow hitting the, the peaks. Yeah. It sucks. Things like this can be super frustrating. You do everything right. You get up on time, you drive the route you're said to drive, and then things kind of just go wrong. You hit construction, and you realize you have to walk an hour for a sunrise that happens in 30 minutes. And then, on top of it, you get epic light. But uh, you can complain, you can complain, you can complain. That's not gonna change anything. What you have to do is just find something to work with. There's always a shot. It's the thing I constantly mention on this channel. And sometimes we can get distracted by the fact that there's this massive peak here that's just absolutely glowing. But there's always a shot, whether it's a shot in the trees, whether it's a shot on the road of Greg walking down the road. or whether it's a telephoto shot with the trees framing everything. There's always a shot. You just kinda have to get over the fact that it sucks, that you're not at the location you wanted to be shooting the shot you wanted to be. So funny story. Oh my God, the funny story is not that I'm dying, but I am. The funny story is that when we were down shooting at that last spot, I opened my bag and I realized one of the reasons why I'm struggling. I packed every single piece of my kit, totally forgot to leave stuff back at the hotel. Normally when I do a hike like this, I'll take my telephoto and then the ultra wide 16 to 35 and that should do the trick. Uh, maybe throw in the 50 millimeter, but I have 14 millimeters, 16 to 35, 24 to 70, the 40 millimeter pancake, the 100 to 400. I even have my drone that I don't have the controller for in the bag. Such an idiot. Woo! Oh man! No matter how tired you are, Stepping into a view like this, always worth it. Wow. This is the monastery that we wanted to shoot way back that way. It's backlit. So I think this is definitely a sunset spot. Um, I don't know if we're gonna hike up here at sunset. There's a bunch of four wheel drives up here. So there was a road that we saw and we think that there's a back way around and we could probably at least drive halfway. So we might come back at sunset. What do you think? I think it'll be busy if, uh, if cars can get up here, uh, but it's definitely a sunset location. We are like sweating one minute ago and now we're freezing because the winds have picked up and it's cold here. Tbilisi was so hot, it was 35 degrees out. 
and we were sweating and dying and now it's seven degrees this morning and we're freezing. I'm shooting this shot very differently to how I usually shoot landscapes just because the situation's different. The peak's got a ton of light on it, the sky is quite dark and the foreground's dark. So I'm shooting the image really dark and just worrying about exposing for the mountain and I think it actually looks really, really good. I've got the four stop grad ND on just to hold in the light on the mountain while keeping the shadows open in the valley and it's not the perfect location for this shot just because there's a little bit of foreground that's messy here but yeah it's pretty close to perfect it's kind of awesome this shot's kind of making it worth the hike alone So what happens when you don't shower and you eat nothing but meat is the dog, they love you. We have a new peace dog. Woo. If you're wondering what happened to the other peace dog in Tbilisi, it found a kebab and ditched us like that. It was like, oh, food, better than Brendan and Greg. But I get the feeling in Tbilisi we'll see peace dog again. <laughs> um, because we already did actually did once already. That's right. On the way to the World yeah. Cup, we saw a peace dog just chilling at the kebab stand. <laughs> <laughs> but we're here. We just met an Israeli group. It was really nice. Yeah. And they said that they caught uh, like a four wheel drive taxi up here. Yeah. And it only cost 50 lari to get up here. 50 lari is like 20 bucks. Yeah. So I think we might come back at sunset actually. Bring Jody and Nelly. Bring Jody and Nelly and hopefully get some alpine glow on these peaks behind the monastery. Right now we're still walking to do a bit of location scouting, but I'm gonna fast forward now into the afternoon. We need breakfast. As we walk down the hill. Coffee. And get breakfast and coffee the size of our head. I don't know how I ended up at the back <laughs> of the four-wheeler, but it's insanely bumpy in here. Yeah. And uh, I think that um, it's probably definitely bumpier at the back. I don't know if you guys drove school buses or were in school buses when you were kids, but the back of the bus was always the bumpiest. And I'm getting chucked around back here. And I think we're almost to the top. Whoa, the Georgian massage continues. <laughs> So we're back up to the top. Maybe. We definitely couldn't have done it in our car. That was so bumpy. There's a ton of people camping up here right now and a lot of cars at the monastery itself. But the spot that Greg and I scouted this morning, we walk a little bit that way and we'll shoot this way. And the good news is one, there's low level cloud just giving a really nice effect. It might even frame the monastery. And second, there's still light hitting the mountain. So hopefully this isn't a repeat of last night or this morning. And Hopefully we get a couple shots. The scene is insane right now. Lingering cloud on the bottom, just patches of light hitting, and I'm going 70 millimeters, I think, 
or about 60 millimeters on the 24 to 70 millimeter. F16, I got a six dot because I want the clouds to kind of be a little bit more blurry rather than sharp. And then I've got a four stop because the monastery's in the shade, but the mountains are just, they're still glowing with light. So uh, I need to hold back that exposure in the background. So not only do I have to contend with the cars that are way back there in the frame kind of being a bit of a distracting element, but now I have to deal with the cows too. It's like, guys, can't you see I'm taking the picture here? Some animals just have, oh yeah, peeing in the frame. Thanks buddy. So as I'm waiting for the potential of light, I'm kind of experimenting with some other shots. And the shot I'm shooting right now is with a 10 stop ND, which is a two minute exposure at F11 again with that four stop. And what it's doing to these lingering clouds that are moving, it's just turning them into really soft pillowy clouds. And on the top, it looks really dramatic and the whole image just looks incredibly soft. So I moved, <laughs> I moved, and don't be afraid to move as photographers, landscape photographers, especially if you've already gotten the shot that way. I moved all the way to the edge of this valley, and it just gets a slightly better angle at the monastery with the mountains in the background catching light. It's a much better angle. In fact, I've probably got two shots here because I can do a wide angle shot and get this little gorge in the shot as well. and I think I've got that already. So now I'm gonna pull out the 100 to 400 and just frame up the monastery with these big peaks in the background. So I think that uh, came out really well. That uh, light was fantastic. And it definitely makes up for, and it kind of almost makes up for yesterday when we got teased by the light and this morning when we kind of had a misadventure. I hope you enjoyed it. George has been amazing so far and I think it'll continue to be tomorrow. I'll see you there. Peace.